garama amepanda juu alafu ile kitu ngombe ambaye leo ambaye na usa kupata watoto aende shule ameisha kukosa pesa si hata nakosa kitu akula kwa hivyo naokopa hiyo ndio naokopa saidi if you have a drought once in a decade then the communities have enough time to recover but what we are saying is that there is not enough time to recover and the disasters are also compounding. I think for livestock it takes about five years for people to recover the stock that they had lost. But if you look at the trend, you had 2016, 2017 drought. And then before five years, you already have 2020 happening. And then because it was very pro prolonged, that's going to affect um, the restocking as well. Well, the Kenya is supposed to be having a tropical rainforest for us but when you look at it if you were to just imagine the greenness in this area what we basically have are isolated pockets of trees and then the rest is very short shrub, shrubs or vegetation that is just growing what basically you have done is to open the surface for to remove moisture from even very deep and therefore we are creating a desert hii boma ilikuwa na ngombe karibu saidi ya msini hapa mamalisa na kiangasi hata kuna hata moja meisha kabisa na sio yangu tu hata hii kwa hii boma ilikuwa karibu ngombe mia moja na saa hii na bagi mbili vya yake na kwa hii boma ingine ile mna hiyo ile mtu alikuwa na ngombe alikuwa kumi na kwanza mbali kufuata mtu alikuwa na ngombe ya 20 ngazaye <laughs> ameisha. Kwa hivyo naona watoto naanza kuwa na kaa nyumbani. Tangu mimi nilikuwa mzee au ametayelewa. Ajawana kiangasi alikuja kama hii. Ulisikia wakati samani samani ati kwa kiangasi kama hii lakini wale kwa babu ndio nasikia nasema ilikuwa ngombe ameisha kabisa mpaka ilikuwa funda watu na kutumia kama nyama samani samani sijui tujui na ndinoto hata uhuru bado hajapatikana samani samani kabisa Greater Horn of Africa or the Eastern Africa is actually one of the regions which is most vulnerable to disasters. But aside from that, we also like to refer to it as an epitome of disaster. So it means one disaster to the other. So if you look at between um, 1990 and 2000, uh, we had a one, what we could call a major drought. Uh, but if you look between 2010 and 2020, 2020, you see we already had almost three because then you had the 2010, 2011, 2016, 2017, and then the one that started in 2020. So we're seeing a trend where it's an increase in frequency and intensity of the drought as well.
From this exercise where I was tracking um, potential associations between um, various uh, climatic uh, factors and also the land factors. So for instance, the loss in forest cover, whether rainfall or temperature amounts. We find um, a quite um, uh, sound evidence that there is a potential relationship between um, human activities in terms of deforestation and that is also closely linked to desertification. We have found out that we, on average, per year we lose about 54 square kilometers of tree cover. So then that means that um, in the next 20 or 30 years, you can imagine that we shall be a complete desert going by the current um, rate of deforestation. But uh, quite significantly, we find that eight in every 10 trees that is cut is actually inside the forest. So if 80% of the trees that is cut is in the forest, then we shall lose the forest completely, much more than we lose the land that is covered by you know, trees outside the forest. But then there are six counties that contribute to half of these laws, more than half of these laws. And these are narrow counties, Kilifi counties, Kuale County, Baringo, uh, Bomet, and, and Nali. Now with the significant decline in the number of trees covering this area, the area in these counties, the rainfall patterns change, um, the temperatures change in the region, the soil quality changes and that has um, a significant effect or impact on the livelihoods of these people. There's no defined uh, physical land use. There's no control on how you physically use your land. So basically it's free trading, free area kind of attitude and you do what you want with your land. That's the problem. It's the same with agriculture land. We do what we want with our land. This is the Mao. And the, the problem is, <laughs> this area right from here, right from here, was actually a forest all the way. All this, all this area here, from here, was a forest all the way up to here. Okay, so that is, that's what we refer to as the Mao complex. But in the Mao complex now, what is left of the forest is this, is this patch here, and this patch here, and you can see this patch is, is highly invaded from this side. And you remember, we kept talking at some point about the cut line. The cut line was actually this line here, which is the boundary between Narok and Nakuru. And you can basically see that there is no tree at this level of resolution. You can see that there is no tree here. The trees are just here. And you can see also these people are also moving in. So these people are moving from up here. What is the possibility that this forest will survive, this line that is left here? This is the line of forest that is left here. It's unbelievable. the abadeas and uh, for practical purposes you can actually see that the badeas uh, the only forest that the abadeas has is this one this one here if you, if you are to look you can see from here you see from here this 
if, if, you, if you think about it, I could just draw a line here. Move out like that, move out like this, you can even see it here. I can just draw a line where the forest was supposed to be. But you see, this is not happening today. It's something that happened a while ago. But then, in, Mount, in, in Abadeas, we say it, we need to protect the Abadea because it's a major catchment of the Tana River. And therefore, we did fencing. We, we actually literally did a fence. Now, the question is, has the fence done some, has the fence, has the fence helped? This is the T estates in uh, Limuru. And uh, you, ca you can just see for yourself that uh, the, 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 the survival of this forest is minimal from what is happening around. You see, this is the Nyayo, this is the Nyayo T zone. So this is the line that the Nyayo said that we are going to protect our forest and then you put the line inside. But you see, people have gone in here beyond the the Nyayo T zone. They have gone in into the forest area. And that is, that is what worries some of us who are concerned. You see like here, they have even now crossed over and uh, this is now a fragmented forest. So even if it was a good forest, there's no communication for habitat. Because what is here, some animals can't move through here. They basically confine themselves here and it creates what we call in the breeding. If you are to think now about biodiversity and things like that, it brings in an issue of biodiversity. But you see this fragmentation, that's one block. Then there's this block that is fragmented. And then there's a small thing that is uh, already gone. And then from there now you go to the, main mount, to the main part of the mountain. But even you can see in the main part of the mountain, there is a road here crossing over. And most likely there is already from the boundary line, you can already see that the people are also going in into the, into the forest. And the layer Ivy, the one maskin in a city and a juicer. The guinea gunyasha, Malishu Kubata, Atacama, Atacama, Aguna Mombe. Now Menyasha, Nyasia Merudi, La Sema, Wakila Mutuna Patam Guf, Atta, Atta Guanda, who are Mutumungine Pale Rafikiako, Nasa Pua Ile, Chota Econai, and Nakuja Guchunga. Night as idea. Waivo Punyaja, Taguaka like it to Missouri. Wherever land is and wherever something is, there are people who live there. There are people already living there. And those people should be given the opportunity to manage the resource that is with them, but guided on the type of uh, designated use. You designate the use of that land. You are told if you are living here near Mount Kenya, the designated use of this land is this one. But you can use the land only in that manner. But you say I cannot police you, so you agree as a community that uh, we need this benefit. And uh, for us to benefit from our land, we need to do what the government is telling us so that we also benefit our, ne our neighbors, our people, the people downstream. At the end, it has to be a multi-sectoral or a combination of different solutions as well. So instead of just looking at drought as a disaster, we might need to see what are some of the climate adaptation measures that could be taken to allow these pastoralists to be able to cope with drought. <laughs>